Hi, Ross here from Wizards Code and welcome to my series on creating a first person zombie shooter. Uh, this is the current stage. In this video we're going to be doing something quite interesting. Up until now we have been using a single level, but we did install Dungeon Architect which is a procedural level generation. And what you're seeing on screen at the moment is the procedural generation of new levels and we can do this at design time or runtime. So this video is looking at how we set that up. So Dungeon Architect has this thing called a flow graph, and that's what we're looking at here. It has a number of different ways of generating dungeons, but we're using the flow graph. So let's have a look at how it works. Let's click play. Now it's generated a dungeon for us, and it's done it by working through each of these nodes. The first one just creates a grid for us, which defines the size of the dungeon. The second one creates our main path. So you can see in the inspector on the right that we've defined the length of the path and a few other details. And then we've got an alternate path. So that breaks away from the main path and comes back onto it. Create another alternate path. This actually is set up wrong. This is going from, from the alternate back to the main. I actually want it going from main to main. So it's another alternate off the main. So we'll regenerate. And there we go. Now we see that we have a completely different layout and two different alternates. Then we have a dead end just to uh, create some interest for the player. And let's have another dead end. And so that one is in there. We're going to have a mini boss later on. Um, so this is the mini boss room. We'll have lots of goodies for if you kill that mini boss, but it's optional. You can bypass them. Then we're going to spawn in enemies. Now, the enemy spawning is very complex. Well, not so much complex, but flexible. What you can see here is I'm having fewer zombies spawned at the beginning than at the end. So it gets more difficult as you go. But conversely, the zombies with torches, I want more at the beginning and less at the end because then they, uh, there is more light at the beginning and the player feels a little bit more comfortable. Finalizing the graph is just a step that the thing has to do. It's a processing thing. Then we create the tile map. That's what it'll look like in game world. And finalizing the tile map adds the items into that. And then finally, we have the result. Okay, but that would be pretty bland. How do we actually make it look good? Well, that's where the theme editor comes in. And here is the theme editor in its completed form, or at least completed in the demo that I have at the moment. So let's have a look at how this works, because as you can see, it's actually quite complicated, but very, very powerful. So here we have a speeded up version of me creating this theme. So I've created a tile map that's already here. And each time I add something into the theme on the dungeon theme editor here, it gets added into the dungeon that is live in the system. So here, for example, I'm creating some fungus and you can see the fungus starting to appear in the scene view on the left there. We've got some torture stuff here and you can see that you've got a lot of control over how and where these things are placed. And so with a fair bit of effort, you can create a lot of variety. Now, what I've done in this version of it is I've made it complete enough to provide a good testing environment. But I'm gonna come back to this later on. I'm gonna add a lot more detail, a lot more variety in the rooms that we have available to us in this dungeon. But for now, this looks great. As we can see in this quick playthrough, I have done a little bit of work on the fog as well as on the dungeon generation here. Um, still not totally happy with that, but we'll come back to that in the future. We now have procedurally generated levels. And so it is time to move on and improve the look and feel of those levels. So this is what we want to aim at. The two main differences here are the fog is significantly improved, I believe. And also there is fire in the torches with a little bit of a flickering light uh, to go with that. So let's have a look at how we do that. Well, the first thing is to write some code that will create the lights flickering. And what this is going to do is it's going to go from a minimum intensity through to a maximum intensity with a smooth flow between the two different points. I'm not going to go through the code in detail, but um, you can follow it if you pause the screen and have a look at that. But the end result looks something like this. And here we see the flickering of the lights. They look pretty good. And um, we have some settings on our script that we can play around with just to get it looking just right for us. And next up, we need the fire. So I'm taking that from the torch in the zombies and just making it a bit bigger, a bit more vibrant, a few more particles. 
and then we should be able to go with just that as is so let's put it on the prefab and take a look at it in the scene yeah they look great okay so we now have flickering fire torches on the wall but this fog is annoying me it's just not varied enough so let's have a play with that okay so let's just play with these settings that are available in the volumetric fog and mist package and if i move the base height down and the total height up what i've found is that you get the kind of tops of the clouds wisping through the floor and this looks pretty good uh, if you get the noise just right and get the colors just right so that they're reacting or appear to be the fog appears to be reacting to the torch light it really looks pretty good we're at double speed at the moment because i'm speeding up the changes that i'm making so let's just drop down into play and this is normal speed now we can see a little more variety there's patches where there's almost no fog and that's going to become important later on because some of these barrels are going to contain ammo and so you need to be able to see what kind of barrel it is but with the fog obscuring the barrels a lot of the time it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for the player so this looks pretty good at the end of all that this is what we have we have a really nice looking scene this is procedurally generated so we can create this uh, or varieties of this either at design time or at runtime and have a very varied game in later episodes we will create more variety in the decor that's in here but this is a great start click the subscribe button hit the like button hit the dislike button Tell me why you do or don't like it. Tell me what you think I should do in the game. Somebody said recently I should put headshots in. It's coming. I've actually implemented it, just not recorded it yet. See you soon.